I was too. Uh, do you do you when you, when you talk out on field? Is it partly to get under a guy's skin, get him off his game, or is it just the way you're built? It's a little bit of everything. It is the way I'm built, but some is to get guys off their um off their game, and then it's also to bring others up. When you see a little lax and lax of days ago in practice and stuff like that, I'm the type of guy to get them up. Guys, maybe the most is it on a, on a you know like the tenth day of camp, or is it, or is it maybe in a fourth quarter of you know the game when you know when do you think it's most effective? I think it's the first the first from the first snap. If I see some that I don't that I think the other guy doesn't see, then I'm gonna talk to him and tell him, okay, this is what I see and this is what I will use as far as a move or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, that's it. Conversations with Harold now and again. What have you guys been chatting most about out there? Uh, just him as a rusher. You know, he's a speed rusher, a dip guy. He 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 dips the corner a lot. So I know if we too high edge speed rusher, then nine times out of ten, a quarterback will be able to step up. So just talking about okay, if he's gonna go high, then maybe I can come low, just to create almost like a flush, almost or something like that. Or uh, depending on the play, whatever play it is, if I have to drop. What kind of what, what drop is this? What's the best way you see me dropping? Because he's been dropping all his career, so he knows a lot about the dropping and everything like that. You lost, you lost your running mate for a little bit out there today. What, what, how tough is it to kind of keep emotions in check? I guess when you're going up against guys, banging up against them every day in the heat of the battle. Say that again. I said you lost your running mate, uh, Jeffrey. I guess oh, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what, how tough is it to kind of keep your emotions in check? And I know how much does Brable stress that. We got to uh, it's next man up always, but then also just continue. I got to be more energetic. I got to add some more. Since Jeff wasn't out there, I got to be more energetic, more vocal, um, just just stepping up make, because he wasn't there. So it's, it's always the next guy up because during the season, God forbid, he might get hurt, I might get hurt. So we have to play those things, and it was good to kind of get that practice in today. Energy and shame. that you bring every day, is that something that comes natural to you, or do you really have to focus in before you, we hear you every time you run out here? Is that, does that come natural to you? That, that's just me. That's just me. I think I think it's uh, an Atlanta thing, Atlanta, Georgia thing, because I don't know any quiet person from Atlanta. I mean, <laughs> I don't, so I think that's just in our nature, and that's what we were born to do. Graves and chain. Sorry, Talking to several players just the last couple of days at camp, so many of them have brought you up for your ability on the field and then also being a vocal leader. Do you have an idea of the impact you've already made here at camp? Yeah, um, I mean, this year I kind of, well, it was last year. Last year I kind of stepped into a um, role of being a leader. Um, years before that, I wasn't I wasn't ready to be a leader. Um, a lot of I, I, a lot of guys gravitate towards me. Um, that's always been me throughout life. A lot of guys gravitate towards me, but I feel like I'm ready and mature enough to step into that leader role, and I have stepped into it. Yeah. Nah, Chick didn't hold me. It was a, a double team with Chig and. Uh, I forgot the other tight end that was in, but it was a double team there. Um, the second guy peeled off. I mean, it wasn't my play to make, but if I want to be great, I got to make those plays. He's getting better. Every day he's working on it. Uh, he knows there's something in his game that he needs to work on, and he come out every day, whether it's early in practice or after practice, working the footsteps to, to control a blocker or sustain that blocker. When you signed, you talked about Definitely, I, I feel like I'm taking the most of my opportunity since I've been here. Um, just learning the playbook, learning from Jeff, learning from Danico, learning from Harold. I mean, there's a lot of great guys here that you can learn from. Even Kevin, by from dropping, learning how, how how many yards I need to drop, where to drop, where my where's my leverage and everything. So I feel like I'm taking a huge a huge jump in the opportunity that I'm having. So what do you think people will see from you this season? No, I'm more just a pass rusher because previously I only played third down. Um, and then the time that I was coming in playing first and second down, I mean, I played, I played good. I think, I think people around the league know what I can do. It's just now having the opportunity to go out, start, and be able to play 800 snaps a year. I 
I just kept my head down, just keep working. I mean, I'm a fighter. That, that's just naturally me. Um, and when 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 I see I, I I see talent all across the field, all across the NFL, and I know and believe that I'm a part of those talented guys, and I can I can match up well with those talented guys. So it was it's a fighter, it's the fighter in me, and I'm not gonna stop till I retire. Graves and Shane both talk about not coaching the result. But it's results-oriented business. You obviously determined to get results by getting to the quarterback. How do you not think about the result? How do you kind of square that? Every day. Take it day by day. Um, it's every day I pick something in my game, whether it's a pass rush, whether it's steps, whether it's something to work on every day, every day. And at the end of the year, that's where you'll find out the results. But every day is a working day. Do you relish the result when you get it? Like yeah, you, 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 of course, you enjoy it, but for me, it's the process, because in my whole career, it's always been about the process. Like, it was a process to get here. It was a process to get on third down. It was a process to get in the NFL. Um, I just feel like early on in my career, I didn't respect the process. Um, I just went off talent, no work, and now that I know you have to put in the work to get the results, it's the process. You got to trust the process. It shocked you. I really got it from Trent Williams out of San Fran. He used to do it, um, and he, he used to tell me that it just wake your body up. It shocked the neuro, neurologic system or whatever system that is. It shocks it, and it wakes you up, um, and it gets you ready for practice. So I've been doing that every day since I've been at San Fran and up to this point. You talked about being a third down guy. I know Braves emphasizes setting the edge. How, how much of the, has that been part of your workload, being a guy who can set the edge? Oh, I can set the edge. Um, it, it's nothing to set an edge. It's just my, what my role was. My role was a third down pass rush. I come in sometimes first and second down to set an edge, but it, setting the edge, i always been able to set the edge. It's just now I'm able to showcase that more often now than rather than just being on third down and going to get the uh, quarterback. Practice the defensive line dominated the offensive line. I say it was balanced. I say because I, I say it was balanced. The offense, offense got out us a little bit early on. Energy was down. Energy was a little lackadaisical, but we picked it back up. But I feel like it was a little balanced practice today. Talk to me about just your physical. You know, I, I remember watching you back in San Francisco. And I remember the bottom of your stomach was just rolling over your back. Wow. Now looking at you two years from now, you see she looked kind of chiseled out. Talk to me. How did you take care of your body? What was your process like? Uh, process just it was off season, off season work. Um, I go, I, I train with Mark Hall, engineering greatness, is Instagram, um, and we. We train, we train hard. It's one of the, it's one of the worst, <laughs> it's one of the hardest training trainers I've ever been with. Um, and we always running, we run hills, we we do a lot of running. Um, and I think that's why my body is the way it is now. He you fat. <laughs> I used to, I used to be fat. When I was in San Fran, I was 280. I was fat. <laughs> Thank y'all. Um, I mean, I feel like it's going pretty good, taking it day by day each day, um, coming out here, putting it on the field, and then coming back in, getting the corrections and the details underway, and just making sure I ain't making the same mistakes when I come out tomorrow. So. How much is all your conditioning work, all your change diet, that kind of thing? How much do you feel like that's paying off? Um, it's paying out tremendously. Um, I'm able to stay out on the field more, um, do a lot of things that I um, wasn't able to do, and. Have fun, honestly, not think about breathing. You got to catch many balls from, from Levis. Say it again. Have you gotten to catch many passes from Levis, and, and what's your impression of him to this um, point? I've, I've caught a couple from him, um, but, I mean, um, he's a great, great quarterback. Um, just got to keep getting better and better like everybody else. And, um, you know, time will tell, and just let God take his course on it. It's a lot, it seems like, to earn Ryan's trust, but it seems like you're well on your way. Can you talk about that, how that relationship's grown? Um, it just goes back to being here in the offseason. Um, being with Ryan, um, throwing with him every day, and it just makes him, you know, trust me more and more when he knows that he can throw the ball anywhere 
um, around me, and I'll uh, go up and make the catch. So, does it, does it get to the point where it's really nonverbal communication between the two of you? It's like he he can just kind of give you give you the nod or whatever, and you know where to be. I mean, he knows that um, you know I know where I need to be, and he expects me to be there, and I know I need to be there. So he's gonna put the ball there, and you know I'll be there to you know make the catch. You guys, your confidence, you draw that from the work that you put in. For you, like this year, you seem more confident. Is that really like one of the key sources, what you did preparing for the yeah, season? Yeah, um, I mean, the off season, you know, it's good to go out and, you know, go take a vacation or whatever. But, um, you know, sometimes being a first-year guy, that second year, I mean, I feel like that I needed to stay here um, and work on, you know, the things that I need to work on, get in shape get closer with the quarterbacks, the coaches, and, um, you know, it pays off when you do that and, you know, it shows out on the field. What does call it day like today help maybe both sides of the football? Um, it helps it out a lot um, just because, um, you know, it gets you ready for games. You know, you go out there and you attack it like it's a game. Um, you're not reading off a script. You know, your coach is not out there telling you, hey, you're next, this or that play. And um, it just gives you confidence to go out there, hear the call from Ryan, Malik, um, will and uh, just go execute it. Talking to a number of your fellow wide receivers, they talk about DeAndre's presence here bringing out the best in you guys, but certainly you weren't you know, giving your best before he was here. So is it just that a, a guy like him brings out an, another gear, or is it bringing out the best maybe off of the practice field in the, in the room? I mean, I would say, I mean, just as a man, I mean, I wouldn't want nobody doing better than me. Um, so, I mean, him being, you know, the – type of receiver that he is and um, just being behind him just makes you want to work more um, being able to achieve the things he's achieved and um, it just makes you go out and grind Is there a thing or two that you can think of um, I know it's only been a week but maybe that you've learned from him uh, From him? Um, yeah, a lot of things uh, Just going out and having fun is the main thing that's all, he, that's all he tells me tells everybody in the room just go have fun move on from the next play and, um, you know, just be be sound on the football field. Don't think too much um, and just play football because it's, I mean, it's not, don't over don't overthink it. I would say don't overthink because it's just football at the end of the day and just go play football. The coaches talk a lot about <clears throat> not worrying about the results, not being focused on the result. Is, is that a difficult thing to, to do because it's a results-based business? And ultimately, mm -hmm. at, at the end of the game, you want to have the catches, the touchdowns that contribute to the win. I mean, just being a receiver, you always will want the ball. Uh, but it just comes from, you know, just having a positive mindset, not being selfish. I don't really care about the results. I just want to win. So that means give Derek the ball 150 times and we win the game, I'm fine with it. Um, I just like I – like, I like winning, um, and I, I think the – my fellow teammates like winning also. What's the difference in your mindset when you're thinking about process as opposed to to, to, to getting the ball, I guess? What do you mean? When, when they're talking about not thinking about the result, what are you thinking about instead, a personal? Going you? to win. Um, I don't really think about the results. I just go out there and move on to the next play. What's, uh, what's married life like when you're in uh, tra married life, married life like when you're in uh, training camp? Um, it's real good. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was a. I would say it's, it's been the same since last year. Um, you know, she knows that. You know, I gotta come to work, take care of the things. So you know, she'll be able to have whatever she want, and live a happy life. And you know, she understands that. She supports me, helps me study. Um, and that's the main thing. You know, when you have somebody that can help you study. Or help you, you know, be better at your job, and you know it plays a big role. Take it you're not in the hotel. No, 100 percent not. <laughs> what was your, what was your ma married day? Say it again. When did you get married? June 24th. Okay, about, uh, about a month. Yes, sir. I don't know what she looks like. Her hands covered her entire face. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that played. I mean, I couldn't help that one. <laughs> there was a list in the athletic. <coughs> Uh, league's general manager, head coaches, offensive coordinators, ranked Ryan as the 22nd best quarterback in the NFL. That's people inside the league. How do you guys feel about maybe the respect level that's given to Ryan outside of here? We honestly don't really think about it. We just care about what's inside our house here, uh, take care of our business, and uh, he knows that, and that's why he goes out here every day and put his 
best foot forward and comes out and practices hardest. So. What are your expectations for yourself? Not numbers-wise, but what do you um, want out of yourself in your career? Man, just to, you know, inspire people. Uh, just show them that you can overcome anything and just have fun whatever, with anything that you do. Just have fun with it. Don't stress, um, you know, and always keep God first. What are you talking about some of the other guys, guys competing at receiver? What, what kind of advice do you give to those guys at the start of camp? Um, you know, I... I I usually tell the guys that, you know, go out there and, and uh, just just have fun. You know, don't overthink anything. Um, and, you know, bring your best every day because you never know if you'll be here tomorrow. Um, you never know if you're going to be here when you get back in the locker room. And so, you know, you always make sure you go out and put your best foot forward and, you know, have fun with it. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Thank you, Charlie. Looked like Will was getting a little bit of a chance to run a little bit with the twos today. Is that part of the plan to start rotating a teeny bit? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and just giving those guys opportunities, and they've done that. You know, and I think that we just have to get him continue to get both Malik and and Will throws, and you know, behind different lines, and working with different backs and receivers, and and all that. So felt like there were some good things out there, and there were some things that you know we just have to get cleaned up and. But I thought it was competitive and you know, got, got, got some things done. How much, how, much you benefit, how much you benefit from these call it days like today, I guess, on both sides of the ball? Um, well, we're hoping that the players benefit from it and, and we can teach from it and we can learn from it that you know, these are going to be the things that come up in the game. You know, uh, whether that's a, that's a penalty or a, a fumble or you know, a sudden change, you, 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 a third down conversion, a fourth down, and then breaking the huddle and going fast and snapping the ball. And, you know, all these things that, that are going to come up in the game plan uh, throughout the week. You know, there were things on the offense that had, had held and the things that the defense had held. Like, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's what's going to happen in the game. Well, we think that they're going to, and maybe that there is a strong tendency uh, for them to be in a certain coverage on a certain down and distance. And maybe that changes or, you know, just, being able to adjust as the game goes on. Will seem to find a nice rhythm in that. I mean, that's a new exposure for him practice-wise in the call it day as opposed to script. I, I do think that his demeanor uh, has been, you know, pretty good as far as maybe some negative plays or things that have come up. I've seen him, you know, be able to, to process and just kind of, you know, transition to the next play and, and get into the, you know, listening to Tim and, and what Tim has going on. So I think that that has been, been pretty good. Um, so we just need to continue that and, and make sure that you're not too high, not too low. So I, I would agree that there, you know, he was able to kind of transition and get the call and get guy, you know, in and out of the huddle. And you know, that's certainly a great start. From what you've seen, how does he respond to the coaching? Like at the end of the day, when he goes on the film with everybody and then comes out the next day, like it's, how does that process? Work? Oh, I mean, I think that they all have done that. That's what we ask them all to do. And, you know, we've been able to create a schedule here with training camp that they have a large block of meetings and then go out and, and walk through uh, the corrections from the day and then walk through uh, what the installation's going to be uh, for the next day. So whether that's Will or Ryan or Malik or, or any of the quarterbacks or hopefully any of our players that are able to, to take those corrections and then, you know, apply them to the next day. Um, you know, a touchdown that I think either Malik or Ryan threw or Will threw yesterday Safety kind of stayed on the front line down in the red zone and, you know, in our meeting and, and, and talking to the safeties and saying, hey, you know, we're, we're going to have to be able to, to, to get back and be able to help that corner on the back line because uh, it was wide open yesterday. So today, same situation, not sure who the safety was, but he drove back and you saw Malik think that he had the same throw or whatever throw that whoever threw the touchdown yesterday. I said, so, you know, they're, they're making corrections and they're trying to, to adjust on their end as well. So. You know, make sure that we're just you know, reading it out, and you know, so that was, a, it was those are going to be good teaching moments here today. How good was it to see Tajay Spears really stick his face in there and get a good block on Amani Hooker's blitz to allow the, the play to go off as planned, as opposed to a sack? Yeah, I mean that's what running backs have to do. I mean they got to go in there and they got to be able to protect, and when we release them, get open, catch the ball, and they also have to not be able to fumble too. So we'll talk about that. Certainly disappeared. He was wide open, I think. I don't know. I didn't didn't get to that play yet in the film, but um, 
you know, Roby was really progressing well in training camp last year and, you know, brought him back. I think he's being able to play faster and know what's going on and understand um, route detail versus certain coverages. And it seems like he's able to play close to his his time speed, which is which is what we're trying to get from everybody. Hold on, guys. He had a follow up here. Really. Did you? see a difference uh, this year, maybe in the speed, that like a year after that, you know, the injury? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I, it looks like he's feeling good and he's running well and he's moving good. And again, there's less indecisiveness uh, from him in, in his routes. How did you feel the offensive line handled the defensive line's pressure earlier today? I thought that we've had some better pockets with pads on. I thought that it looked like a, you know, shit through a brass horn the first couple of days, and I think it's been better uh, with pads on. I think that these guys have been able to try to, again, try to fill, build some depth in the middle where the quarterback can step up and try to get some width to the, to the edge rushers. Not that it was perfect, but I would say that it's improved from, from my vantage point. And, again, I try to stand back there, and that's the one thing that I can kind of feel like, I'm like, maybe I wouldn't want to be a quarterback on this play or, hey, there's some comfort level. And, you know, so again, they're working together. They're seeing the games. They're seeing building profiles on rushers. This guy likes to rush this way. This guy, you know, likes to do certain moves. So that's all part of the progression, I think. When there's a lot of turnovers, that you expect that early in camp. I would say that that's probably going to be the way that it is, you know, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but just my experience early on in camp, just because they haven't had that work in the off season. You know, we don't have spring practice. We don't have padded spring practices. We don't rush live in, in the off season. So we're trying to develop players to, to probably do one of the toughest skills uh, that we would ask any player out there on the field to do at any position is, is pass protect an elite athlete uh, without the reps of an off season other than punching a bag or a stationary target. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoop, oh, that's a little quicker than what we practiced in April and May. So um, you know, we'll just keep progressing and trying to get those guys to, to work together as a unit. How's the chick coming along as a blocker? Um, well, I mean, I think the biggest thing for, for Chig is going to continue to be his hand placement. You know, I don't think we're going to make him any bigger. He's not going to be a 260-pound player, but you know I think we have to just continue to focus on his hands and, and making sure that they're they're inside, that they're strong and they're powerful. You know, first play today, just you know not going to be able to sustain against Arden or any player with your hands outside. You just don't have enough power. So he's willing. I just think that the technique has to improve. You talking about the Derek run on the outside? Or the first one. Has Hubbard given you? What from a veteran coming in? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, again, he show, showed up here 30 minutes later. He was practicing and uh, yeah. was able to function. I think he's gotten better each and every day. So I, I enjoy his attitude. I enjoy his willingness to, to hop in there and, and his professionalism. You talked about chick size. You, you've got <coughs> a group of tight ends who, who've got some size to them. I, I, I imagine there's design behind that. Well, again, we're just looking for functionality and the guys that, that can have the ability to try to sustain uh, at the line of scrimmage, whether that's in the pass, pass game uh, or, or the run game. You know, you, you, you got to find ways to, to neutralize you know, some of these defensive ends and some of these edge players in, in our league. You know, they're, they're, they're elite players for a reason. They're, they're long, they're explosive, uh, they're instinctive, uh, and so Hopefully we can find some guys at the, at the end, of the, end of the line of scrimmage that can, that can help, help block those guys or at least stalemate them in a run game. And when we play past it, that we can hold up. Here's one, one, time, one play where you caught a horse collar and maybe a taunting right after it. Uh, how, Two for one special. Yeah. Uh, how, how, what's the balance of what the guys to play hard, you know, make plays, but also not cross the line? Yeah, I mean, we want them to go to the line. We want them to look over it, take a peek, and, and, and stop. I mean, you, you have to be able to play this game uh, with, with speed and with violence, but also, you know, 
be able to understand when you could get a defenseless, you know, player penalty in the back end of the defense, when you could get a blindside block as an offensive lineman, or in that case, you know, a horse t collar. And, you know, again, that, the horse collar is one thing. It's, it's taunting and the point and the finger that, you know, is just going to end up being a, a penalty. It's right in front of everybody. When you first start talking to new guys here about not focusing on results, is that difficult to break through with some who are thinking, well, I got here because of my results. I want to make touchdown catches. I want to get sacks. Is, is there an early disconnect for some guy? I don't think that there is. I mean, I, I've, this is a results and production business. And when I coach sometimes, it's, maybe I've misled you a little bit. And it's like, you know, we, we want them to be able to go and make plays and understand where they need to be uh, with with, uh, with regards to the team as well. You know, there, there's a play that's relying on everybody's job and everybody's responsibility. And if you stray too far from that, you know, then I think that that's a problem. But, you know, having your own little flavor or your own little flair is, is different than just kind of going rogue and, and doing your own thing when the quarterback expects you to be somewhere else or the defense expects you to contain on a certain blitz. Like, we're sending four guys from one side. Like we're we're going to need you on this one. This is a non-negotiable. Like you're going to have to contain. So, you know, I think we try to do a a good job of walking and having that balance of, you know, being a football player and, and making plays and, and helping the team, but also not being a detriment. Is there anything from when you became the head coach here to now that you kind of look back and change the maybe a little, or do you feel like? been steady Eddie on the way that you do things from camp, all that stuff. I think we're always trying to change things and change things daily. Like we have a schedule for Thursday and based on what the, the health of the team is or what we need on that particular day, that may change. I think I've tried to always stay flexible and be able to adjust and adapt to things that come up. Um, I think that the overriding themes are similar. But we've cha we've changed practice schedules and the way we do things each and every year. How do you manage the balancing act of like obviously you've got two young quarterbacks that you want to get as many reps as possible, but you also have a new offense with a lot of new pieces in terms of starters. So you know balancing in practice, getting as many reps to those guys to prepare for this season and not focus on the future. Yeah, we none of us are focused on the future outside of today and you know what we're going to do. So. We've tried to just balance the reps out and, and, you know, the guys that right now that are working with the ones probably have more reps. Uh, and then I would say that the two, the next two groups are probably somewhat balanced. Tried to do that today. Tried to plan out what I thought the reps were going to be, Kayla, and they maybe were a little more or less. You know, you have to have a, have to have a plan. And then if it doesn't work, be willing to adjust it. So we tried to, you know, when we say develop them, I mean, we're talking about develop them for, for this year and how they can help us this year, not, not the future. So right with the kicker competition, is it maybe more valuable to see what they can do in the preseason game situations where they may have to make a 50-yarder late in a game to you know, put you ahead rather than what goes on out here? Well, I think that would always override it, but you know, we'll, we can only manufacture so many of those things, and I'll try to do my best to to manufacture those. We're also going to try to run plays that help us score touchdowns and, you know, but I, I mean, ideally, yes, I, I would hope that any game experience that we could use to evaluate everybody would be beneficial. How many of those we're going to get, I think remains to be seen. There's someone like, like Mac who played a whole season in the spring. Do you guys have to do anything different with reps and recovery since he played so recently or is he kind of same type of deal? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, Alizé is going to be willing to take as many reps as he needs to take to, to try to earn a role in this team. And if he tells me, Coach, I need need a rest, then we'll give him a rest. But I don't anticipate that being the case. That play you're talking about with Jake, his hands outside. Did he hold on that play? No, I felt like it was just on a, on a first glance, I felt like he let go when Arden broke the framework of his body and tried to give him a shove is what we coach to do. I think, again, I looked at it with a critical eye and I didn't see restriction at the point of attack. Um, but again, I'm not an official. I just try to look and see what they call. I felt like he did let go and he did try to give him a shove. And then we'll see if that guy, you know, in that case, Arden, you know, can, can tackle Derek. So 
Uh, again, I think it could have been better. I thought that it was smart not to grab them and tug them, and it was smart to give them a, a shove at the end like we teach. So started off not so well and, and probably could have finished and finished okay. How much of these practices do you get through before you come back out to talk to us? How much of the practice? Well, I mean, when we have guests here, I try to sign autographs, and so maybe I get through, I don't know, some of the open field tackling or 15, 20 plays. I, I mean, I try to sign autographs and then go in there, and then when Robbie texts, I, I come running. <laughs> so, Tim, on the competition on the offensive line, uh, now that you've got the pads on, how much of a difference does that make in trying to gauge what guys' strengths and weaknesses are? Yeah, I think it, it, it makes a it makes a tremendous difference. Um, obviously, when you put the pads on, you get, you get the feel and you get to see how physical these guys can be. Um, you get to see you get a clearer picture of them being able to work in in combination with one another in both the run game and the pass game. So, you know, up front for those guys putting the pads on, it's 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 really the true litmus test for them for you know where where they've been. Um, in terms of the past and now the strides that they made throughout the offseason and yesterday, they really had their first chance of being able to go out there and show it, and they did a good job yesterday. How happy were you when you heard that Yanni was coming here? And happy. Then what was the <laughs> and then what was the process like in trying to – what has it been like in trying to get him up to speed with what you're doing here? Yeah, I mean, he's done a great job. Uh, he's come in, you know, um, learning the formations, uh, learning, learning how we do things. Um, learning some of the different concepts, you know, that, that he may not have had while we were together in Houston. But he's done a great job in the meetings, learning, taking notes, doing everything that he needs to do to make sure that he's learning the, the, the offense as a whole in its entirety and really not just memorizing his, his particular job on that one particular play. So uh, he's done a great job of coming in here and, and getting caught up to speed, and Rob's done a great job getting him ready to go. What skill set does he maybe give you guys that maybe you didn't previously have? Yeah, I think uh, – you know, he's a guy who's who's played at a very high level for for consistently for uh, you know since he's been in the league. Um, he's got a great catch radius. Uh, he's a physical player. He's durable. You know, up until whatever happened, you know, last year. He, you know, when we were in Houston, I think he played in every game except for one, <clears throat> and that's because we held him out. Um, he's tough. Uh, you know, he's a warrior when it, when, it, when it comes to, you know, going out there on Sunday. So um, I think it's good for, for everyone to kind of see how he goes and how he plays the game. Um, and, and it's been good so far, yeah. How's Levis's consistency been day to day, and what do you see, how do you see him tracking? Yeah, they've, uh, all, all three of those guys have, have put together a good camp so far. I, I, I know it's early, you know, with yesterday being the first day in pads and, you know, going into practice six, I think. Um, but he's done a good job taking the strides and, and, and being more comfortable playing quarterback for us. So, uh, but again, it's not just Whale. It's, it's all three of those guys have, have come in this camp and, and have really done a good job um, you know, being consistent and, and really taking charge and, and leading that huddle. How exciting is it for you? kind of elevate the rest of the guys in that receiver. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, – it's, it, it gets those guys, you know, playing at a higher level. Um, obviously, with him out here, you, you, you see some of the catches that he's made already in one on ones and the back shoulders and things along those lines. And then you look over and you see Traylon running by guys, and you see Kyle, like it's just there, there, there's a sense of competition in that room in terms of wanting to make sure that they're going out there and winning uh, consistently. And, and really, that that's what we need. That's what we need them to do. That's their job, right? Is to be able to go out there, get open. Win, win versus man-to-man -man coverage and catch the football. And so uh, when you have a guy that, again, that's done at a high level, everyone wants to be able to play up to that standard. Back to, back to Levis, uh, how exciting is it for you when you start to see guy, the light come on for him? Because yesterday he was making the throws before the receivers came out of their breaks and it was hitting them right in stride and stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yesterday was good. It was, but again, it, it's, it's, it's one day. Uh, and, and we want to continue to see him, you know, do that again today. Same deal with Malik, same deal with Ryan. Um, so anytime you're out there and, and you see your guys make strides in, uh, in areas that, that you've asked them to make, you know, improvement in, it's, it's encouraging. Now, uh, the big thing for, for him and for everybody, right, is to make sure that we're taking another step forward today. On those second-year skill guys, how much more comfortable do they look just at not being their rookie year and kind of understanding the pace that you guys go through practice and things like that? Yeah, I mean, there's a, and, and we, I know we've talked about this before, and, and really at every position, there's a there's a there's a learning curve from coming from college and playing in the NFL. 
from what it takes, you know, what it means to be in shape to be able to make it through an NFL practice, um, from what it means to actually, you know, learn the playbook and, and know know what your job is and things along those lines. So all those guys from Malik to Kyle to Traylon to Chig, like they, they've all done a good job. Um, obviously learning the lessons from last year and coming out and, and performing, you know, pretty well for us so far. One of the things that uh, Malik uh, touched on last year was, was trying to get the ball out a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah, uh, there there are definitely times where you see more anticipatory throws. Um, he's not waiting for somebody to be open, uh, which you know in this league when you're doing that, a lot of times I don't care how strong your arm is, you're going to be late. Um, so he's again, we that that was an area that we asked him to improve on, and throughout the, the the first six or however many practices we've had, he's done a good job of coming out and, and you know making those strides. We talk about the passing game so much, but how important is it for you to stick to the fact that Derrick Henry has been the focal point? Yeah, it'd be it'd be you know foolish of me to 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 not play to our strengths. You know what I mean? And, and obviously having Derek here, um, we we got to make sure that that we're putting him in the best spot to be able to continue to have the the high level of success that he's had throughout his career. Uh, so, you know that that's something that we're working on as a staff, and that's something that we're not going to forget is is understanding who we are and, and kind of what the backbone is of of our identity. With that being said, do you think we're still in the days where? 30 carry weeks for him are, are going to happen. I mean, if it means that that's what we need to do to win the game, like that that that's going to be the biggest thing for us on offense is making sure that that we're doing whatever it takes uh, to be able to go and win that game based upon the game plan, based upon you know the vision of Coach Vrabel, um, and, and making sure that we're doing what, whatever we have to do to to, to win. About, uh, and Mike has talked about too the emphasis of playing faster and moving at a little quicker pace. How, how does that impact the offensive line in that in that setup? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that it does. Obviously, I mean, it forces them to, to they've got to make sure that they're in, in shape and have a high level of conditioning. Uh, but when when you're able to, to do some things, um, whether it's changing tempos or get in and out of the huddle faster, whatever it may be, uh, that could cause a certain level of discomfort on the other side of the ball. And so, you know, when they're not sitting there getting screwed in. It could cause some some consternation up front for the defense lineman, which in turn would make their offensive line job easier. So, there's a lot of things that that go into it. Um, but again, they, I, I can't stress enough; those guys have done a good job of of again learning the what the expectation is, learning the the new concepts, the new schemes. Um, and again, the big thing for them is to come out and have another good day with the pads on today. I know just one day in pads, but how, how you evaluate what you've seen from your guys up front so far, and what's most important. Yeah, uh, you know, being consistent, uh, obviously the uh, being able to, to, to protect the quarterback and, and make sure that we're doing a good job getting movement in the run game. Um, so, you know, th- those things will never change when, when we're looking at our offensive linemen and kind of, you know, what we ask for them and, and what we expect for them. And, and obviously that goes along with, you know, playing hard and, and being able to set the tone and, and bring the energy and, and bring the physicality uh, that we're going to need. So about some of the situational stuff, what, what a high percentage of plays happen in the red zone, mm-hmm. happen on third down stuff. How much do you emphasize that to the guys, the specifics of that? Yeah, I mean each each play is its own is its own situation, um, and so it's it's really important for our guys to be able to understand like, hey, it, yeah, it might have been first and ten or second and five, but now it's third and one, and what does that mean, and how does that change things? And and the deeper that we get into camp. Uh, the more situations we're going to be exposed to and the more they're going to have to be able to adjust on the fly. So whether that means, hey, we're going from a two-minute situation to a four-minute situation or we were backed up and we had a shot, now we're in the red area, like it changes like that. So our guys need to make sure that they they understand what it means when we're in those situations um, and what to expect not only from, from us in terms of the play calls, but what to expect from the defense. Yeah, uh, you know, it goes. It, it's not just the work that they're doing on the field. You know what I mean? It's 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 a unique room, and it's like that in every building. You, you got a, a lot of a lot of guys coming from diff- different backgrounds, um, but really they all have the same goal, and that's to that's to you know protect the guy who has the football. Um, and so Haas, Sully, Jonesy, they, they do a great job cultivating that culture in there, 
and and you can see the continuity carry over from what's been developed in the meeting room to when they get out on the grass. So um, that's something that they're going to continue to work on. And again, you know, they've had one day in pads, and and they get another shot today to to be able to build on it. When you have so many receivers competing for limited spots, do you have an ideal number in mind of how many guys you want, or is it just keep the guys who earn it? Yeah, I mean, keep the guys who earn it. You know, that that's the biggest thing. There's going to be competition everywhere uh, at every position, and so our, our guys are aware of that. Um, and, and we're honest with them, and we tell them the truth. And, and the guys that, that earn those spots are going to be the ones that are here. How's Spears been so far, and, and uh, how much you kind of experiment with him to see how much he can handle? Yeah, uh, he's done a good job just learning his role and, and understanding what, what he needs to do and what we're, what we're going to ask for him. Um, you know, as he continues to master those things, we'll continue to put more stuff on him. And, and uh, so far, Taj has done a really good job. Good. Thank you, guys. Sean. Uh, Murphy Bunning kind of acclimated himself <coughs> as the newcomer in the secondary with the other guys. How's he blending in? Yeah, I think it's been good. I do. I think he's come in here ready to work. Um, he's gotten to know the guys, kind of how we operate. Um, I think all those guys right now are in the process of building, building relationships, you know, um, developing trust among each other. I think he communicates. He's He's got a good personality about him. I think the guys relate to him really well. So, it's been good. Obviously, a guy who's been in the league, done it a little while, he, he kind of knows what it looks like. Um, but up to this point, everything's been good. Yeah, really good. Um, wouldn't know that he had missed time for an ACL. He, he's, and for me, really, I kind of expected that with him, um, just with how he works, how he trains, how he pushes himself in the off season. I knew he was doing that with rehab. Um, haven't missed a beat. Um, see all the things I saw from him prior to the injury. So really optimistic about where he's at right now and where he's going to go. It seems like Christian is a little more consistent this camp. Have you noticed like anything different mentally, physically, or even that he's been more consistent? Have you noticed that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think he came back ready to go. Um, I think this is probably the best shape he's been here, uh, been in since he's been here. Um, looks stronger, looks more physical, looks in condition. Um, I think the addition of Hopkins is, is huge for him too, just the competition aspect of it. Again, it's, it's always been for Christian, and we tell him this, it's the consistency, right? Play in and play out. And to have that competition play in and play out out here in practice, um, it requires a high level of focus, right? To be able to go out and execute and do what we're asking him to do and ultimately end up winning your one-on-one versus a guy like that. So um, hopefully that continues with him. He's he's off to a great start right now. It's a big year for him. He knows that. We know that. Um, so hopefully it continues. As Gibbons and Rice kind of go back and forth in that spot next to Aziz, what will determine who, who maybe gets more more snaps there? Yeah, I think as, as that thing plays out, it's going to come down to production. A lot of it's production-based. It's a production business. Um, who's producing? who's the best in that role with all the intangible aspects as well, right? The communication, uh, the alignments, all that type of stuff that comes into play at that position. Um, it's a leadership position on that side of the ball, on our side of the ball. So just being able to communicate, um, understanding our scheme, the techniques, all those things we're asking them to do. And ultimately that stuff is what we believe is going to lead to that production. So we'll see as it plays out. Yeah, I, I've been pleased with it. I really have. Uh, coming in, I think that third, fourth safety spot was one of those things that we were unsure of. Um, I think at this point, Elijah's done a good job. He's handled it. Uh, I think Mike Brown's done a really good job. I think he's progressing, improving. You see improvement day in and day out with him. I think Shai Carter's done a really good job. And then those those rookies flash at times. So, um, been pleased with that corner. I said it in the spring, it's a competitive position, right? From front to back, it's there's competition. Um, it'll be interesting as we get into these games and these guys have to go out there and do it, how some of these rookies stack up against some of these guys that have been here, like Trey Avery, Chris Jackson, some of them. So so we'll see. I think that's going to be a process here over the next month. Is Elijah looking maybe increasingly more safety than corner or, or back and forwards or, or? – yeah, I mean, he's he, he's a nickel, right? He's a, he's a nickel only for us. Um, 
at the corner position. So I think that's something as we as we kind of go through this fall and we kind of see where Raj is at, how Raj is handling things as we go. Um, ultimately, our job is to get the best 11 on the field, right? So we got to kind of evaluate that throughout these next few weeks, see where we're at. They're going to get reps. Rogers is going to get reps outside. Elijah's been getting reps inside at nickel some. He's getting plenty of reps at safety because that's kind of the new thing for him. So in terms of his development, I think that's important. So we'll kind of see where it plays out. Personality seems to be on all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun to coach guys like that. Guys with energy, guys that bring other guys with them. Um, I've said it before, like the great ones want to be coached. The guys with great energy, great enthusiasm, like those are the guys that you feel like you can go to and coach at all times, right? The ones that are standoffish, quiet to themselves, mopey at times, those are the ones that are a little bit harder to coach. Right. Um, so we embrace that. We encourage that as much as we can. And when he's in the meeting room, you see the energy, you see all that stuff. It, it doesn't go away. Right. But there is a level of focus and intention with what we're trying to get accomplished when we're in the meeting room as well. Absolutely. Um, think a strip sack's better than sack always. Uh, 24 of the top 26 fumblers in the NFL are quarterbacks. Uh, we got to find ways to affect the game. And the front has a way they can do it. The back end has a way they can do it. The linebackers have a way they can do it. And up front, it is putting pressure on them and seeing if we can get the ball off them, right? And back end plays a role, too. They got to get them to hold it. They got to be in tight coverage, all the things that come into play. But those are opportunities we can't miss. Like, we, we've missed too many over the years where we've had opportunities to attack the football instead of just going for the sack at times. Um, and we got to make sure we're making an emphasis that the ball is the issue. Like, the sacks will come, but we need to make sure we're attacking the football. How do you guard some of the, the young D linemen that have kind of emerged more for you this offseason? How much is this your time to, to show what they're about with the pads on? Yeah, it's uh, – it's, it's a great opportunity for those guys. I think PV has taken advantage of it. His development through the spring coming in this first week of camp has been tremendous. Uh, something's got to continue. Like we need him to be a good player to develop into a good player for us. Um, I think the drop in weight has been incredibly important for him and his production, his ability to move. Uh, Naquan, I think getting healthy right, was a big focus for him and getting back to what he was as a rookie, right? Like he was a productive player for us as a rookie, getting back to that and what we had that year and continue to progress there. And then we got Shelvin off, off the Bengals P squad and it's, it's the day to day, come to work. If you're out here, you can improve and he's got some ability. So getting that out, out of him each day, um, we'll see with these rookies as we go, right? We'll see with these rookies as we go, just, just where they're at. Like we had one day in pads, and hopefully today is better than it was yesterday. What do you need to guard against the whole unit feeling really good about itself for playing really well against familiar people on your practice field, or do you want them at this stage feeling really good about themselves? I mean, we are, as coaches, we never really coach results. Right, like we coach the actions, we coach all the things that go into the like the results are going to happen because we're doing the right things to get there. Right, so I mean it's a fine line between confidence versus arrogance. I, I would agree with that, um, but at the same time, if we're out here doing things the right way, executing with proper technique and fundamentals, and finding success that way, like I'm all for. It. I'm gonna be the first one to celebrate it. Right. I ain't going to celebrate if it's a bad throw, a tip pass, whatever might come of that. Like, that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, there's it's a fine line. I, I think we got to be able to build that confidence, but we can't we can't always rely on just us having success as an indication of how good we are. They're still going to have feelings about results, right? That's natural. So no, no doubt. Guard against that, or do you allow for that? Uh, I think we when we go back in that meeting room, Paul, on every single play, every single player is getting coached, 
Does that make sense? So, like, as good as a play was, like, there's a lot to coach from in, on every single play, practice, game, everything that comes into play. So I feel like they, they need to be able to have that enthusiasm and gain that confidence. But at the same time, I don't want them to feel take by taking shortcuts or not playing with the technique that that shit's going to crap. That crap's going to be able to sustain throughout the season. so obvious to us, but it, it kind of impacts everyone around Yeah, well, the first thing that probably is obvious to you guys is the speed, right? The speed element, he plays the game at a high level. Um, I think that's the speed off the edge is only going to benefit those guys inside, the guy on the other side. Um, I think one thing that's always been huge for me with him is he has been a huge effort production player. Like, he plays harder than really anybody on our D. Him and Jeff are like the standard for what it takes for a front guy in terms of effort. So a lot of his productions, effort-based, um, been huge for us in the years, saved us a lot through the years. Um, and then I think just his, his, obviously his versatility, right? Like we can ask him to do a lot of things just based on his skill set. Um, and he's smart enough. He's got a great football IQ where he can handle all those things. Yeah, I think it's huge. Like, uh, you face these offenses and they're going to find ways to double certain guys or find ways to chip or whatever that might be. And, and again, the more guys in protect, protection, the less guys are getting out. Should ultimately help our coverage do some things with that. Um, but just the, the rush focus in general, you get the speed off the edge, you get the guys working together, running different games, different stunts in there. Um, I think it's got a huge impact. Like, they're not going to be able, if as we keep progressing, they're not going to be able to say, hey, we got this one handled. Let's focus on these three. Let's focus on these two, right? Like, they got to be able to account for everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been really good. Now, obviously, in the off season, they did a really good job competing against one another. Uh, we gave them a few things each to work on, um, you know, during that five weeks off, and uh, we think they've kind of picked up and actually even gotten any better um, since they've gotten here. So uh, we'll let this competition roll out as long as it needs to. Um, but we're we're excited about both of them. Yeah, I mean, we're trying a bunch of different guys right now. Um, this is obviously a big period for us as far as putting on pads. You know, everyone kind of looks good in, uh, you know, shorts, running around, doing their thing, catching balls. Uh, but, you know, kickoff returner, we'll, we'll put Tajay back there, Hassan, Julius Chestnut. It'll be a, a bunch of guys that will get that opportunity. Um, and then punt returner, obviously, Kyle Phillips, um, Mason Kinsey. You know, we got some guys back there that we feel feel pretty good about. And uh, it was good to have both those guys, you know, with Mason and Kyle uh, going back there and competing against each other. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how it all plans out during training camp. No, he's actually done a really good job. Um, you know, it was, it was big in the summer just to get away from things. And uh, I know one of his big things was he was going to go out there and, and catch punts, you know, all the time out in the summer. So uh, he's came back with a, a good level of confidence. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to put more pressure on him during practice and then give him uh, opportunities in the preseason to see what he can do. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, a lot of people just say, well, he made this amount of kicks and he should win the job. You know, we're looking at a bunch of different things, leg strength. We're looking at um, how accurate the ball is, how straight it is, uh, you know, because when you hit a straight ball, depending on wind and things like that, uh, we want a guy who can hit a straight ball 
so the wind doesn't play too much of a factor in it. So there are different levels than other just making, hey, I made 90% to 88%. So we look at all those different things. Tom Quinn's done a great job with those guys right now, and he'll continue to evaluate those guys as long as myself. Set a bunch of records and stuff. What has he evolved? Uh, how has he evolved taking that jump heading into year two? Yeah, I mean, there's things that he can always improve on, and one of the things that we were talking with him was his hang time. Um, it's not always hitting the ball 70, 75 yards, which looks pretty, by the way, but we also need some hang time. Uh, so he's really tried to focus in on that. And, you know, depending on where we're at on the field, it could be a ball that goes 70 yards, but he's got to know the situation that we're in where we could want a ball that's 50 yards with over five second hang time. So he's really honed in on that and uh, he'll continue to improve because uh, the best part about Ryan is he's never satisfied, uh, whether it's his holding, whether it's his punting, and he'll continue to work on that. And uh, I'm excited for him this year. What's the process like in finding guys who can, who can play teams that have never played before in college? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it's big right now with the pads on. Um, because this is where it's going to separate some guys, uh, not just in the shorts where they're running around, especially at the gunner position where, you know, everyone can run as fast as they possibly can and, and make plays. But now since we got pads on, uh, they're going to go against two guys and it's going to be a physical battle between those guys and guys who have never done it before in college now get an opportunity uh, to do it in the professional game. So uh, this is a big week for evaluations with those guys with pads on. Uh, we're, look, we're looking for physicality. Um, you know, those guys who can take take two guys on at a time um, with their hands, with different techniques and fundamentals. Uh, so we'll continue to put them in those positions um, this week and next week before our first preseason game. How difficult is it to coach a punt returner that might have like issues catching the ball, worried about like receiving the football? When they're not getting hit, when there's yeah. not guys coming at them at real speed, how do you work on those techniques with them? Yeah, we, we try to simulate as much game experience as we possibly can. Obviously, we can't just have a guy go down there and run and try to hit him uh, during practice, um, you know, because we don't want guys to get hurt before they can showcase their skills in games. But we're going to try to put them in the most difficult situation, whether we're having three or four guys around them, whether we end up putting our hands, doing a bunch of different things on them, um, you know, before they can catch the ball. So there's different situations and uh, things that we can do to help those guys out. Is there any kind of a deadline for the two young kickers to say like, okay, this isn't going to work. We need to go find a better. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a deadline at all. Um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to have them compete each and every day. Uh, and once one of them maybe goes ahead of the other one, then we'll decide on that. But there's no timeline right now with that. Is there anything on Wolf when he got here about what you like about him and he needed to adjust this or that? And how's he done in that regard? Yeah, uh, obviously we like Trey's uh, strength leg strength coming out of Texas Tech. Uh, and we're really trying to continue to work with him on angles. Um, I know one of the biggest thing was his backswing. Um, we're also working on Ryan Stonehouse holding the ball a little bit different um, from what Caleb can do, because uh, we can manipulate uh, his ball strike a little bit of kicking a straighter ball with even the hold. So uh, we worked with him, Trey, on that. And we've also worked with Stoney because, you know, Kickers, uh, there's different ways they like things, and we just continue to work with Trey on trying to kick a straighter ball and, and the holding parts part of that too. How do you project something like that? It's just, man, he's got a giant leg. Let's see if we can make it more accurate, or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest things uh, that we look for is leg strength. And then what we can do is make minor adjustments on accuracy, uh, you know, especially younger guys that are coming in through college, they might not be as accurate, obviously, as the professional game is. So um, we'll look at leg strength, and then we'll, we'll try to tweak them as much as we possibly can, um, but not going away from what got them here. You know, we don't want to tweak too much uh, where they don't have any confidence in their leg swing. So we'll try to do some little adjustments with them and, and try to figure out, you know, what works for them to be more accurate. Any way besides just seeing it in the game and, and having to see it for yourself that you can know whether a guy's got the makeup to nail a 55 yard or get of the game to win one? Yeah, uh, really, no, because you just got to get them out there and see what they can do. Now, you can talk to them. Um, 
you know, try to get in what's what's in their mind when they think about kicking a, you know, a big time 55 yard field goal at the end of the game to win the game. But unless they're out there trying to kick it, you know, you really don't know. Oh. You'll sit in meetings from time to time, and, and what do you tell maybe the guys coming in and obviously know Tim from his days here? What do you tell them about the impact he makes? Yeah, T Tim's in a bunch of meetings that he can make. Um, but, yeah, we go over with those young players uh, the importance of Tim Shaw um, for this organization and what he's meant to us. Um, but, uh, you know, the one big thing that I tell our players is Tim Shaw one year went to the Chicago Bears and played in 15 games, and he had 30 tackles, which – is unheard of right now. Um, so that gives Tim a lot of credibility and a little street cred uh, that the younger players realize, um, you know, 30 tackles in a season on special teams was pretty important. And he just gave Monty Rice a big dissertation about his punt sets and how he punches. So uh, he means a lot. And he's, you know, it's another eye out there, a guy who's done it for a very long time at a very high level. Um, so we're, we're so glad that Tim's around and, and is able to, uh, you know, really communicate with the players and let them know what he sees. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you.